see, praise God, it's a time to be rejoicing, it's a time to be shouting, and it's a time to be right with God. Don't wait till you're dead to get right. Don't wait till you're dead. I told this lady the other day, she got, she got all tore up in my workplace. I said, you better not be uh, not right when you die. You better be right before you die. It's a good word. Don't wait till you die to get right. Come on, somebody. Don't wait till you're dead to get right with God. Now's the acceptable time. Are you ready to meet God? Are you ready, son, to meet him? Are we all ready to meet God? Do you know what you have waiting on you in heaven? Number one, you're going to be with Jesus all your days, the rest of your life. I said, you're going to be with Jesus for the rest of your days. You're going to be in the presence of the one that died for you. And in, in, in his fullness, there are going to be animals there. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't shut up yet. They're going to be dinosaurs. You believe that preacher? You watch and see. There's going to be dinosaurs there. They're going to be lions and tigers and bears. We're going, I'm going to lay out in the field. I'm going, I'm telling you, I'm going to lay out in the field. I'm gonna lay, and, I, and, this, and they're going to be just like a pretty cat. And they ain't going to try to eat me. There's going to be mansions underneath the ocean. There's going to be mansions on top of the most incredible mountains you've ever seen. When you think it, it'll be there. One time you had to worry about a treadmill. Lord, to God, you must be straight up and down. You know what I'm saying? Instead of straight up and over like me. I mean, you don't have to worry about getting on the treadmill. You're going to, come on, come on, I'm telling you, you're going to have a glorified body. But the greatest thing about it is the day, I tell you what I'm looking forward to. I'm, I'm a little hesitant, a little bit scared, but the day I get to go see God. Say, so where's Marcus? He's a pillar in the temple of his God. When I get to heaven, I'll never have to preach again. There don't be no need for it. I want to show you what, what, what's going to matter in heaven. Listen to me. You don't need your faith in heaven anymore. You won't need anything like that. But the only thing that will follow you to heaven will be one thing. And one thing you'll have to have is your love. Amen. That's the only thing that will follow you to heaven. Did you love? He'll ask you that one day. He'll look you in your eye and he'll say, did you love people? He said, did you care about people? Did you reach out to people? Hey, yeah. He's looking right through you. <laughs> did you? Did you forgive? Well, it's quiet in here now. Are you sure you're ready to meet God? <laughs> because he's going to ask you that one day. Thank God Jesus is going to be standing there with you. Amen. What else about heaven? It's going to be incredible. We're going to come back with him. Somebody said, you ever seen Israel? No, but I will one day. Now, whether he'll have me in Israel or you in Israel or us in heaven, I don't People have asked me, do you think, preach, I've had some of y'all even asked me, preacher, do you think when we come back with him the second time that some will be on earth and some in heaven? You know what? Don't ask me. You better ask him because I don't know. But he knows. He said, uh, uh, Enoch said, I saw the Lord coming back with 10,000s of his saints, which means, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost now. And there'll be a multitude that can't be numbered. Maybe you'll be on that horse. Wouldn't that be awesome, man, come riding out of heaven with you? The King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's coming back, praise God, to set up his kingdom on earth. Hallelujah, we're going to be part of it. And people say, preacher, are you crazy? No, I'm just telling it like it is. Y'all know person. said, you live in a fairy tale. And you know what I tell them? And I wrote it down. I put it on my Facebook page. I put it in my heart. I said, let me tell you what. You said, you can call it whatever you want. I said, you can call it a fairy tale. I said, but I'm going to tell you right now. It's not a fairy tale because you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. That's the fairy tale. And you better get right with God. And, my, and, and it's not that I'm mad. I'm not. I'm bold. It's not that I hate people. I don't. But I'll tell you right now, it's time for us to tell people that Jesus Christ Amen. is soon to return, Amen. that we're living in the last days, and, and, and not to be ashamed because I don't want to stand. You'll still be saved. When, you're still going to rapture, but you don't want to stand before him ashamed. Amen. I want to stand before him and just say, Woo, hallelujah, how you doing, Lord? Glory to God. <laughs> you know? Come on. Don't want to stand before him ashamed. People say, is this, is this really going to happen? Just like he said. Now, last thing. I'm, I'm promising we'll close. This is it. Do you know why this thing's not fell apart? 
I mean, our economy should have already fell apart. I mean, the world should have already... Because God has simply told me. He said, simple son, I'm holding it. So what's there to worry about? He's holding it. He's the one that decides. And what if he came to you and he said, you know what, I want to talk to you about the rapture. I want to know what you have to say. He said, what if he came to me today and he said to you and said to me, he said, uh, church, said, uh, if you could have the rapture today or ask me to, to give 20 more years, what would be your answer? Now think about that. As much as I want to go home, I can't, I, I, I've, already, I've, already, I've had this conversation That's why I'm talking about it. I said, well, God, I said, I want you to tarry 20 more years. I said, because there'll be people that will be saved. But I said, but there'll come a day and your word will be fulfilled and it'll be just like you said in the book of Revelation, just exactly everything he said will happen. Amen. And then it'll be too late. Yes. And them old crazy Pentecostal holy rollers that they call whatever, these crazy people that went to church all the time, why do you like to, you, Josh, they said to him, why do you like to go to church? Because that's where God is. That's where Jesus is. That's where the presence of God is. I'm just as churchy as Noah was archy. Amen? I want to be in the house of God. Before I ever preach, Brother Lord, I want to be in the house of God. And I want to dwell in the temple of God. I want to dwell. Don't you? Come on, raise your hands and tell him. Say, God, I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Lord, we just want to be with you, Father. God, if you want to tarry 20 more years, what's that to us? God, we know that your coming is near. We know that, God, you're going to come one of these days and you're, you're going to move in a mighty way before you come. And God, I want to thank you for the work that you're doing. I want to thank you for this prophetic word, Heavenly Father. God, I can see it in my spirit. You're pouring out the oil. You're pouring out the balm of Gilead, God. You're pouring out the anointing, God. It's coming out, God. It's dripping upon the church right now. And God, we're being fed by the very one who said, I am the bread of life. I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father. My God, shout hallelujah, but by me, God, you're pouring it out tonight. Lord, you're ministering life right now to your people. God, I give you the praise for it and the glory. They went all night, the valiant men, to recover what was left. And that's the way that I feel about the remnant. This is my last point of my message. The valiant men. Those that are the remnant. There was just a few of them that got stirred up, but they went to get what remained. They went to take it off that wall. They went to bring it back to where it belonged. Come on, somebody. This is the last word from the Holy Ghost tonight. And they went and they, and they and, and it said that they got all of it and they brought them back. And when they put them under the tree, they didn't rejoice. They fasted and wept for seven days. You know what that means in our life? It means this thing ain't going to happen with ease. It means we're going to have to pray. We're going to have to fight. We're going to have to stand our ground. We're going to have to stay where God has planted us and we're going to do a good work and he's going to do it through us. I believe that. And he said, I will perform that work in you until the day that I come. Come on, somebody. Raise your hands and thank God right now. Lord, in the name of your son, Yeshua, God, the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for this church and what you're doing. Lord, I thank you, God, for what's even coming. It's even going to be greater than what you're doing right now. I thank you, God, for filling wounds. I thank you, God, for filling rooms. I thank you, God, for opening our hearts and healing our bodies and pouring out your anointing upon our young people outside right now, God. Lord, let them increase, God. Let our young people be blessed, God. Let them come in by the drove and be saved, God. Pour out your spirit, God, upon this body like you never have before. My God, shout hallelujah. God, pour out your spirit upon your church tonight. We've seen a lot of bad things in life. We've had a lot of things happen in life. Look at me. But Jesus is still right there with you. He was always there with you. And all God wants you to do is say, I need you in my life. I want you to show me. If you don't believe that he's real, I'm going to tell you what. If you'll be really genuine with God, really sincere with God, he might show up at your bedside and you'll see him. I mean, he literally could appear to you. But he'll show you that he's real. I remember not my brother. Stand up.
I love this man. Raise your hands. The power of God got all over him. He's been hooked ever since. He come to me the other night. He said, come here, preacher. I want to ask you something. He said, no. He said, preacher, he said, you think I'm crazy? I said, what? He said, he said, I'm seeing this blue dot in my room, this little blue thing. I said, that's the Shekinah glory of God. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. And see, God is doing a great work, just little things. Just It don't take some great big thing, but just a little bitty thing to encourage somebody. Calling them up on the telephone. <coughs> Telling them that Jesus is alive, that Buddha's dead and Jesus is alive. Amen. Just a little bitty thing. That, by the way, will keep them for eternity. And that's what God's doing here. It's just He's touching people in just little bitty ways. Renee, for example. She called me. We talked the other day. Preacher. Said, I, had no, yeah, I hope you still don't. She's not had a bit of hip or back problems. Said, God touched her here Sunday morning. Let's give God praise. <laughs> and he had a one. Not a one. And you know what the law is? Well, well that's, not a, that's not some great miracle. It is to her. Ask her. It is to her. It's a huge miracle. My back and hip are hurting me. I don't want to hurt me. I'll be walking around. I need some bones. <laughs> Stand up. I'm going to let you go. Church, you have been great to stay with here tonight in the presence of God. I've kept you a little bit longer. But I want to tell you, hey, I want to tell you that, that God's doing something here. Amen. The devil don't like it. Amen. He ain't going, there ain't no way he can stop it. Because you know what I told God? I said, God, I said, this time when he comes in to try to stop it, remember when he's in the garden and the devil has the devil and his army come out? And he, he got up and he said, well, where, who is he? Where is he? And he said, I'm he. And I said, God, just speak that word and let them all fall down backward. That's what I've been praying. They're going to all fall down backward this time. You hear me? Let's pray right now. Amen. Father, first of all, I want to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Lord, I feel your presence in this church building, in, in this service, God. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your encouragement. Lord, most of all, I thank you for loving us. I thank you, Lord God, for answering our prayers. I thank you, Lord God, for changing our lives. I thank you, Lord, for those little things, those things that cannot be explained by man, those things that I call supernatural because they come from you. I thank you for the healing touch and, and the power of God upon our young people's lives. And Lord, I know that there's people in here and they're listening to what I'm having to say only because of your anointing. But God, I pray, God, that God, if they don't hear my words, God, then God, let them hear what you have to say by supernatural visitation. God, I pray you would visit them supernaturally, just like you did Richard in that movie. I don't know how you'll do it. It doesn't matter. But God, I know you're going to do it because it's the time to do it. God, you said that you would pour out your spirit. You said that you would reveal yourself like you never have, and I believe that, God. Lord, I want to thank you tonight for this body of people for all that you're doing in their life. God, I ask you now, Father, to keep us and bless us until we meet here again, Father, Sunday morning. And God, I, I release your anointing. I release, God, your favor. I release your peace, God, upon your people. And, and, and I praise you, God, tonight for your word, for this time of worship. And God, most of all, for your presence in this service tonight. And the people of God said amen. amen. Hey, hug somebody's neck and tell them they look beautiful. Tell them. Go ahead. Tell them. Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee, zip code 37742. Emails may be addressed to nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. Pastor Marcus Severance and the congregation invite you to join with us Sundays at 10 a.m. for teaching followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We're located on Highway 411 in Greenback, Tennessee, just three buildings down from the intersection of Highway 95. If you can't meet with us in person, please join us again next time for our broadcast.